If you follow me, you know I love my luxury. I have for you the most luxurious smelling fragrances that will have you smelling wealthy. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Greta and I love fragrances. I have a thousand fragrances behind me. And of that, I picked for you my top fragrances that smell expensive and of luxury. These are it. Uh, these are feminine leaning kind of list. I've done before for men. This is my feminine leaning list. So if you want to hear about these fragrances, stay tuned for that. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you so much for all your support. I absolutely appreciate it. If you're not currently subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you get more of these type of videos in your feed. I would love to have you here with me. So let's get into this list because I have a bunch. So if you follow me for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of Raja Parfums. I have this whole shelf of Raja Parfums and that has always been to me the epitome of luxury. There's something about his DNA, the way he blends all his perfumes that just personifies luxury. You can't wear a Raja without smelling like money. Like there's just something wealthy about them. But picking two very easy to love fragrances um, these are exclusive to New York City, but you can find them on other sites. I uh, is Bergdorf or Madison. Either of these, if you can get your hands on them, absolutely love them. They have that cosmetics counter kind of vibe to them. Now Bergdorf is this opulent florals with an airiness to it, yet this powdery kind of fog to it with a cosmetics counter, lipsticky kind of powder to it that I love. Madison is similar, but it definitely has a more sweet kind of feel to it, a little bit more of like a berry kind of influence to it. Definitely sweeter, a little bit more young, um, something youthful, energetic about Madison. I mean, that's like the big avenue in New York City for the really high-end shopping. Uh, think like Koenig's Alley in Germany, um, Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Um, I can't think of the names in Rome and Milan. I can't think of the name of the streets there. But it's basically that street of fashion. So it's named Madison. But there's something, I mean, I think I... If I had to choose, I would probably choose Madison over Bergdorf. Bergdorf has a more um, queen princess. Let's put it that way. She's established. She's a power player. She's feminine. Um, she's This one has more power and maturity over Madison. Madison is youthful and having fun, party girl, shopping girl kind of a thing. But they're both really, really good at capturing that essence of luxury. Moving on, this is newer to me. This one was selling out and was having a hard time. But I do believe the stock is back. She's kind of amped it up since this got out. It became popular. Is by Rania J. Musk Motius. As soon as I got my hands on this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is phenomenal. Like, this is really good. You know, I love black currant. You're getting that black current. You're getting almost like this aldehydic kind of sparkly vibe, but it, and then it turns, it's like a almost cosmetics counter like where it's this sparkly powdery kind of vibe along with a little black current giving it this sweetness and fruitiness. While there's also this almost almond vanilla kind of feel to this vanilla powderiness. It just is so elegant smelling so incredibly elegant smelling. Um, if you like Chanel. Now I did not put a Chanel in here. I looked through my Chanel's and I was like, I don't know if any of them are really right. Uh, you know, if I'm gonna pick it, it's gonna be Chanel number five. And you all know already that like, that's a love hate. And so many people these days seem to hate it. 
even though for me it works, but I honestly haven't worn it in a while either. That, but the way this has a sparkly, powdery kind of vibe to it, I would say if you like Chanel's, you're gonna like this. It has that same kind of vibe that every Chanel has. This sparkly luxury kind of feel to it. And I love this. With that creamy vanilla sandalwood, I, I get almost an almond kind of hint to it. This one is so good, man. I, I bought 100 ml and I seem to have been like the last one that got it before it sold out. I do believe they are all restocked. I got mine directly from them. And I do have a code Greta 10 with them also. Um, I think it's now maybe in a few retail stores, I'm not sure. I just know I got it from them and I got it really fast too. So yeah, Rania J, Muskmotious. Oh, I think Lucky Scent has it in 50 ml. But you know it's always a better price for 100 ml, so that's what I did. And you know I always have a code with Lucky Scent. I, I love working with Lucky Scent because they're so close to me. And he carries everything. I do like that about them over there. Let me go to a very different vibe. This is a more Middle Eastern type influence where you know they really like the power player. It's almost like in the winter time we love going to that Middle Eastern style because they're so intense, right? Even though they wear them in the desert in crazy heat, they'll wear these. This one, gosh, I love this one. Oh, this whole house, I love. Widian, 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 Widian. Oh my goodness, why did I wait so long to try you out? And I will explore them more. I've gotten some requests to feature more of them. I did get a bunch of samples. There's more bottles I wanna get from them. Oof. But this one is the epitome of the luxury, which is Lubin. Lubin to me, it's it opens strawberry. It keeps this strawberry influence, a very fresh but potent kind of strawberry. Um, and it's it's juxtapositioned with this Middle Eastern Oriental kind of fragrance, this like heavy Oriental style. Uh, they just they contrast so beautifully. It's blended, yet the whole oriental base of it is really well blended where you're not picking out notes. And then the strawberry just kind of, it's like a cherry on top kind of a feel to it. Man, I love this. It just smells luxurious. It performs phenomenally. Um, there's a slight, like, smokiness, like hint of smoky bacor like to that base oriental. Yet there's also this like vanilla powdery luxury essence to it. Along with, don't forget that fruity strawberry. There's a certain creaminess to this fragrance. Um, I find gardenias to be so luxurious smelling. There's something special about gardenias to me. There's gardenia and rose in here. Rose giving to me a little bit more of a classic Middle Eastern kind of oriental. And it's, um, gosh, I love wearing this fragrance. It's definitely voluminous on me. Uh, there's something very put together and powerful feeling about it while also saying, staying very luxurious um, and queen-like about it when I wear this. Uh, the strawberry helps me feel a little more girly too. Although this definitely is unisex. I'm not saying it's a feminine fragrance. It really is 100% unisex, but you know I like my fruits. I just love this one. There's, this is done so incredibly well. It is such a smooth kind of um, like base to that fragrance that I just get the florals and the creamy woods and this powdery vanilla and all kind of swirling together. That man, Lubin is so amazing. I love this fragrance. Yeah, Lubin by Widian. Next up by Suspiro is Belcanto. This to me was always like the feminine counterpart to Vibrato where they're both these big, powerful, powdery, musky fragrances with incredible performance, where that one leans into the citrus ginger. This leans to me, and you can call me crazy, but it's like a vanilla with a hint of almond to that vanilla in here. There's no almond listed, but to me that vanilla has a hint of almond in this powdery, musky, fresh fragrance. It's a very fresh feeling 
powdery vanilla musk. There are citruses here in the opening. Um, I feel like it is more about like the vanilla powdery kind of aspect. There's something feminine, warm about it. Um, candied, powdery kind of a lean to it also. Incredible, incredible performance. And I always feel elegant when I wear this. And I know it's gonna have this incredible performance that I don't have to worry about feeling fresh with this fragrance. It's going to last over a day. I, Bel Canto was my first pick out of Suspiro as my favorite. It was just, it was an instantaneous, that one. I like that one best. It was easy for me. It was just, it's just such an easy grab, Bel Canto. It's a, an easy reach, if you wanna call it that. It's, if you like Narciso Rodriguez, kind of powdery musks, but you wanna up your game, you want something more elegant, you want something more refined. Rodriguez uh, kind of is like skin scent kind of stuff, where this is definitely performance projector longevity, night and day when it comes to performance, but if you like a powdery, musky kind of feel to it, uh, if you like pudre, if you like the pudre in particular, I think you might like Belcanto. So I didn't put a Chanel in here, but I did grab a Dior. I couldn't help this one. I did grab the Miss Dior Parfum. I've been so delighted about this release. It's insane. So delighted. Um, Angela, I think it's French for a day. I'll link her down below. Angela did an incredible dedicated video on this fragrance. She is so, she's so well versed with Dior and Chanel and some other of those designer makeup perfume brands. Um, She's been a delight to talk to. We were both giddy with excitement for this, talking to each other like, did you get it yet? Did you get it yet? Who got it first? Let's talk about what we thought. That, and it's funny because we didn't talk about what we thought, but we both came up with the same answer, that it is reminiscent of that previous generation before they started changing in 2011 and getting more into like watery florals. This goes back to the generation of the original from 1947, the Mishori, and then um, the Miss Dior, is it 2011 EDP and the Le Parfum. It's kind of like a different generation where they smelled more elegant and opulent and had this patchouli base that gave it this richness to it. Um, that Dior sparkle of cosmetics counter kind of feel just gave it this, um, a woman that was done up and polished and this fragrance was just that finishing touch to you know the, the makeup and the hair and the jewelry were spot on the op the outfit was amazing and the fragrance just finished it off it's back to that style again which makes me so so happy it has strawberry in it it has this fruity essence then the pink florals along with this rich patchouli that really props it up and gives it that elegant feel. Man, I love this one. I'm so happy, so, so, so happy. Um, I'm gonna have to scoop up more of this because Dior has instilled this fear in me now that when I fall in love, something might vanish. But I am really happy that uh, Francis Kirchian, he sold to uh, which big company? I think, was it L'Oreal? One of the big uh, big conglomerates. He sold the Mason Francis Kirchian brand and he then went as master perfumer to Dior. And I believe this is either his first or second that he did. This was the big deal to do the Miss Dior over again. So everybody was anxious how he was gonna do it. Um, I'm totally pleased that he did uh, give a nice nod to that previous the previous versions of Miss Dior. He really went there while keeping it modernized. So I couldn't be more happy with this, honestly. I'm so happy. Um, I've only had it for like 10 days or so, so I'm still enjoying it and just, yeah, the Miss Dior Parfum. Definitely gonna give this um, well-dressed woman, women at lunch kind of feel to it that I'm so delighted to have back again. So yeah, Miss Dior. And I haven't featured a lot of Miss Dior because I have not liked that version, what they've been doing with these very watered down florals with a hint of fruit. 
since like 2011. I haven't really been a fan of them. I did get the last EDP. I was like, okay, maybe this is the best it's gonna get and I should maybe try that. But now, now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. So this is a big difference and it's a game changer. I like it. So Miss Dior, I have not talked about this gem in a while and my goodness, this is definitely one that makes me feel elegant when I wear it. And it's by Zerjop and it's Pico Viadama. That means, as I believe, um, Queen of Hearts in Russian, which, whew, this is the Queen of Hearts. Hold up, right there. <laughs> that bottle in my hand is the wrong bottle. But don't worry, because I'm actually going off of memory in my experiences with this fragrance, not what is in my hand, so don't worry. So this, um, if you like, again, if you like Chanel's, if you like a sparkly, Aldehyde. Aldehydes is what Chanel uses, what gives it that certain sparkle to all their fragrances. That's aldehydes. It's kind of, it took me a while to understand what aldehydes are, but when you understand that's that DNA to Chanel, it kind of helps understand. It's just that chin is sick. It's over there. This one has that, along with some citrusy, airy notes. And then there's this vanilla, powdery, sweet patchouli, patchouli being the type of patchouli I like sweet with this powdery vanilla essence. There's something um, white linen suit about this. Something very clean, fresh, a clean aesthetic to it. Um, quiet luxury. A quiet luxury that just in, in a quiet way screams luxury kind of a way. You know, I might have to do a quiet luxury video. Let me know down below if you want me to do quiet luxury fragrances. You know I love my luxury, right? Like, you know I love it. But yeah, Pico by Adama. And I haven't worn this one in a while and I miss this one. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to circle back to this. Uh, this one doesn't project as much. This one is more demure. Again, a quiet luxury. It's demure in that those that they're speaking to are gonna smell it, they're gonna smell beautiful and elegant and uh, has a sweetness. You know I like some sweetness to my fragrances. It is unisex. This one smells sharp on men. Like if they're at a day wedding, this one smells sharp. I love this and there's something yeah, like a day wedding kind of feel that's very luxurious, polished, um, or your, your boss lady that just smells put together, elegant, not trying to prove things. She's more quiet about it. It's a quiet confidence, this fragrance that I love. And it gives a little bit of a bubble around you, but doesn't scream into the stadium, right? It's more, yeah, it's more classy. Like, who are we talking to? Are you in my like personal conversation? You can smell my fragrance. But that's Pika by Adama by Zerja. I absolutely love this one. She's not cheap, but I think they now have a smaller size, so it's a little bit easier, a little bit more accessible. And of course, you know, I, I offer everything too. Here's another brand that does everything luxurious and I'm always shocked at how reasonable their prices are, is by Uvogant, which is a sister house to Paris Monte Carlo. But Uvogant is their ultra luxury fragrance house. Even though they still keep the prices under 300, they're closer to 200, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm always shocked. And this is Mon Bordeaux. This one was my favorite. Mon Bordeaux, meaning um, my, dre my dresser, like this is like the bedroom, like Bordeaux photos. Uh, something so sexy, sultry about this one. Kitten. This one is like your sex kitten. This is Marilyn Monroe in some of her sexy photos. This is just, oops. A powdery vanilla, almost cocoa powder kind of feel to this. Very, yeah, like soft kitten like to this fragrance while also being luxurious. This one purrs, like she's, she's your kitty cat, this one. Um, while also being ultra elegant, blended so incredibly well. Yeah, it's this ambery vanilla that's given this powdery texture to it. And then all these powdery florals mixed in there, giving it this feminine, sexy kind of feel. Oh, and the performance is fantastic. This is one where they just can't resist leaning in to get a little closer to just gobble up this perfume on you. 
this is, um, yeah, this one I think is very sexy, yet has this princess vibe to it too, where she's very, she's a fancy girl, but she's, yeah, sex kitten kind of girl, this Mon Wadois. I find this one so incredible, so beautiful. And I love these bottles. There's something so luxurious about these bottles too. They feel so good in my hand. Uh, Benita. I can't not put Benita in here because their bottles and cases and everything are so incredibly luxurious. They are so well blended. This one is Premier Moore, which you know I love. It's the first collection. Cecile Zerokian did it. It's a vanilla. It is a vanilla jasmine, is it? It's a powdery vanilla tuberose. This one has the most incredible siage to it. This is one that I just constantly get these whiffs of, and I'm just like, wow, is that me? Because I smell incredible. This one is stunning. It is powerful, and it is luxurious, and it is a statement. It is captivating. Man, I love this one. Creamy vanilla tuberose, um, a very bubblegummy kind of tuberose in here that just matches with that vanilla so, so well. Oof. Uh, it is one that will stain. You can see, like, look at this. It looks like cherry juice, right? It is such a dark brown from that vanilla. It's been aged beautifully. Um, almost like a reddish hint to it. This will stain your clothes. You've got to be careful. This is definitely one that will do that. But gosh, it doesn't even take much of this to have a constant sillage whipping around, following you, and you will be snapping next with this one for sure. Oh, I love this one. Last up I have from Panthea Roma. Hey, I, I fell in love instantly when I smelled it. I just at the moment couldn't purchase it. This is on their higher tier collection. Comes in a gorgeous box. I mean, just look at the bottle. It's extra special. It has a bottom like a champagne bottle. The way you can put your thumb in there while you're pouring. Um, this one smells spectacular. It is my favorite of all the Pantheon Romas. There's something very elegant and luxurious about this. I love that it's in a white bottle because I do depict this woman in a flowy white dress. There's something a little tropical about it. Probably because it opens with mango and coconut. And then I just get this uh, elegant, um, vibrant, airy kind of vibe from this. Uh, there's a creaminess to it also. That that coconut vanilla again, this creaminess. I just get like white florals, but it's a jasmine and orchid in here with also a powdery iris that just gives this airiness to it, a tropical airiness. I just get flowy white dress from this elegant and expensive white dress. And it's a beautiful sunny day. There's something about the the tropicals in here, that mango and coconut, just give me a beautiful, perfect sunny day kind of vibe to it. Not that you have to wear it in those circumstances, but there's just like, she's a ray of sunshine. The woman wearing this is just a delight. She's a, 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 a sight for sore eyes, a delight to you, is what this fragrance just brings me. It's just, um, yeah, like when everything's clicking and everything's going right, everything's in order. That's this lady right here. Gosh, don't we always wish we could be like that too? Let me tell you, with the days I've had lately, whew, I have to remember hard what that was like. But I love this one. There is a sweetness. You know I like sweetness. There is this creamy, sweet coconut vanilla in here that I really enjoy. An amber, this like give it a volume of amber that it performs without being a beast. There's something very elegant about this one. A, you got to try A. I absolutely love this one. She's so, so beautiful. But those are my fragrances here. Um, my favorite ones that just kind of... They scream luxury to me. There's something very elegant, um, wealthy, luxurious about these fragrances that I just love. Let me know down below some that you love. And yeah, and I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.